think that, that Netflix do the kind of things that we are both alluding to with their canary index. So part of their release process is to define a canary index that identifies how you know that this thing is working okay. And I think, if I understand correctly, some of those things are designed in, in the context of this, this piece of work. And so business, you know, business indicators, you know, are more people watching this, this movie or whatever else that kind of stuff which sounds like the direction you know the direction this conversation yeah, yeah, is going again, you have a behavior in, change know. more people are watching this yeah. movie and things like that and i think yeah well you know one of the one of the most wonderful things that happened uh kind of over the course of the last 10 years is is the barrier to do stuff like that the drop yes so much it's amazing so 10 years ago you could do stuff like that if you were netflix yeah or, or google or amazon now I can do that kind of stuff as, as a single person, small software vendor. It, yes. It's the, the, the totally insane. Like the barriers drop so much. Mind map is just two people, kind of me and Dave. And, mm -hmm. and we are doing everything from uh, uh, pre-sales to product management, to development, to testing, to you know operations and things like that. We are competing with companies that have two orders of magnitude more people. Um, yeah. And, 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 you know, it's, it's a bit unfair when I say it's just the two of us. It's the two of us plus all the support that Amazon gives us yeah. that's included in the price. And, and I remember when I was um, working in, in 2005 for this um, gambling software company, you know, we, we had like every fucking weekend... There, there was a bunch of us staring at the monitoring screens, waiting for the databases to start falling over. And uh, because none of the clients wanted to pay for capacity that they really needed at peak time. Yeah. This was too expensive. You'd have to, you know, have too much hardware there, not, not really doing anything. And uh, it was always kind of pushing the limit of, uh, you know, this... Saturday was was really crazy. Kind of, there was like Saturday from I think eleven to one p.m. You had fifty percent of the traffic going for the whole week, yeah. and everybody was like, you know, holding their breath to see will the will the system survive or not. I had no free weekends for years, and and basically, um, the the stuff I'm building now does comparable traffic because yes. it's it's a much wider market. I don't remember ever having to, you know, stress about will it survive, will it not survive. It's all auto scaling. It's it's all managed effectively by somebody else. I can focus on on the business side of things. And and the body has dropped so much. You can do canaries now, effectively included in the price of of the whole kind of serverless thing, yeah. which is ridiculous. And and you can. Um, do things like that technically that, you know, you would have to have not, not even thousands, but tens of thousands of employees before you can even start thinking about that 10 years ago. And, and that's, I think, one of the wonderful liberating factors of, of the whole kind of cloud thing that happened. <coughs> So, so you, you were you were pretty much, to, at least to my mind, you you were a fairly earlier early adopter of you know cloud based tech and and those sorts of things, at, at least for your own stuff, um, and uh, and you, you, you're an AWS serverless hero and and you know well known in the community, <laughs> well known in the community for um, for promoting these ideas. I see, I see all the time sort of bigger companies struggling to make that transition to the cloud. What are they getting wrong? What, what, why, why is it hard for them and easy for you? What, what, what's? Well, I mean, if you're a large organization, everything's difficult, isn't it? Everything, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Everything, so that's the start. Everything's big. The second thing is, I think, uh, kind of, first of all, there's a lot of um, uh, gravity pull of, you know, from, from existing ways of doing stuff. And you need to have something that escape, that, that reaches kind of the escape velocity to really escape the gravity pull of, of the existing thing. Having said yeah. that, I mean, there's lots and lots of examples of large orgs. Um, at least if you look at the case studies that Amazon has migrating to, you know, serverless or, or, or you know, these mm -hmm. kind of de deployed containers and things like that, if you want to be somewhere in the middle. And, and um, 
I, I, what are they getting wrong? I don't know. It's probably kind of uh, trying to do too much at, at uh, you know, to, to, and and trying to do the wrong things. Probably um, that that's very difficult to to say. Um, I think one of the things that is really interesting to look at there is the shift from kind of the the static costs and 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 planning to dynamic costs. And I think. Uh, you know that, that that's a difficult sell for for some organizations. Explain um, what you explain what you mean a bit. Well, um, so if you own your own hardware, if you you know if you pay people to maintain it, you know exactly how much you're paying. If yeah. you deploy something on an auto scaled architecture and somebody just tells you we're going to bill you for this, you know as much as you use. Um, on one hand, that should be a really easy sell, and and if you look at like IBM selling that for the last, you know, 50 years to large drugs, that's what they're selling. If you buy an IBM mainframe, you don't buy an IBM mainframe. You, you, you pay yeah. them for the amount of processors they've activated. Yeah. Um, and <clears throat> I remember talking to somebody from an investment bank where, you know, they had this IBM monster in the basement and uh, they, they needed more capacity. So he was kind of, on the phone with the IBM sales rep saying, oh, you know, we need more processors. When can you get them to us? And the guy said, well, it's active for you now. We've kind of had them in your building for a long time. We've just not been charging you for this. Um, so, <clears throat> so, so, so kind of utility, you know, utilization-based pricing, on one hand, companies are already happy paying for that, like for, for electricity, for, yeah. you know, even for computing, on the other hand, there's still a lot of reluctance to kind of jump in and, and do this stuff. And I think um, that, that, that's just there's, kind of the, the gravity pull of the ex existing way of, of doing stuff. There's, there's, there seem to be other barriers to me rather than the, rather than the commercial ones alone. So, so certainly those, those, yeah, those absolutely, are parts. Probably, but, yeah, but, yeah. but, but, the, but the, the thing that seems to make people nerv nervous to me, and I can't, I can't quite work out why they weren't worrying about these things before, but it seems to me that the big step to cloud is worrying about essentially concurrent programming, shared data, distributed systems, those sorts of things, which are harder to think about, but they're the kind of things that, they're the kinds of systems that I've been involved in building for a very long time now. And so that seems normal for me. And mm. I, 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 I think that's the same of, uh, of you. So but I, do, you I, yeah, think, do you think that's one of the barriers? I think so. it is a, you, if you look at your cloud, you know, lo lots of people call different things cloud, of course, you know, so if yeah, you, yeah. you could you could get, uh, you know, a single virtual machine and put your nice monolith there and, and run your database and your, your kind of, yeah. uh, you know, web app and, and everything on it. And you, kind of given that it's just virtual architecture, you could probably kind of get something that's monstrously big to, to you know, survive yeah. whatever. Um, but the the I think w w what you're talking about is definitely true for this whole kind of serverless thing that lots of people you know still can't figure out if it's a fad or not and and the name is not really helping. But um, for me, uh, and, and you know we, we we talked about this lots of times. We've kind of shared the same uh, interests. I I kind of I've been building trading systems for a long time. I was building trading systems for a long time yeah. before I started building my own products. And kind of everything there is, you know, eventually consistent, distributed. You you kind of, yes, you might have yeah. like a monstrous database at the end to settle things. And, and that's your, your kind of golden truth. But um, if, you, if you're going to hit that all the time, your, your performance is just going to be unsustainable and, and, yeah. and it's not going to scale. So um, if you look at, Several stuff, AWS Lambda, Google Cloud Functions, you, you, your, your hello world is a distributed multi-versioned transaction processing system with, with all yeah. the concurrency and, and consistency problems that you know, these things have. You can ignore it at your peril and you, know, you can kind of abstract it away in, 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 in certain things. Amazon does a lot to help people abstract that away, but if you approach it as a um, eventually consistent distributed system, you can you can you can benefit amazingly from that. And I remember talking about this exact thing yeah. at um, go to Amsterdam uh, five or six years ago. I, I 
again, really embarrassed, I forgot the person's name, somebody from the Erlang community. And um, kind of the, the, their argument was that most of the stuff that we talk about now with kind of these things, and, and you know, I, I remember talking about messaging systems in 2008, 2009 with QCon. That was a big thing then. I don't know if you remember any yeah. like <laughs> okay. classes and that shit. Um, yeah. So again, it's, it's the same thing that, you know, cycles every 10 years or so. In, yeah. in a different different kind of uh, skin. But he was talking about how when you have a system like that, figuring out the protocol that your yes. components are going to talk to, to talk with, uh, used to talk to each other is the most important thing. If you get the protocol right, yeah. uh, you can make all sorts of mistakes yeah. and, and, and fix them later. But if you get the protocol wrong, then nothing will save you.